Hunter Jones, Cal Poly University. I'm the DU chapter president down there. Uh, today we're on the California Delta and uh, looking for a place to hunt out here with uh, Campus Waterfowl. So much water moving around and uh, things changed here in the past week. It's kind of a lot of unknowns, but we're gonna try and figure it out and get a hunt together for tomorrow morning. Waters went down quite a bit. Uh, seeing little pockets of, of, of ducks and geese kind of flying around in the evening time here. And, uh, I mean, everything everything went from being spread out to being being pretty uh, tight together as far as as far as water goes and as far as uh, birds being um, in the area. I guess uh, tomorrow we're looking at putting some smaller puddles of water and. Uh, you know, really just trying to find a place where we can get birds to tuck in in the morning. If you look out here, it's all it's all land. Um, you know, this was like five feet underwater just five, five six days ago, which is insane. Uh, so the water's gone down about five or six feet. And uh, really this, this California flood headed into the new year has been nothing short of, uh, nothing short of crazy. There's a lot of, lot of unknowns with all this water. Yeah, we hunted this area last week and um, you know shot a handful of a handful of birds or shooting some geese and shooting some teal we actually ended up with a with a few cinnamons which was awesome like i said the water was the water was about five or six feet high last week we were we were set up under these trees here and we had the boat on the other side of this levee that's about six feet tall right now um, so that just kind of shows you how far the how far the water has gone down um, you know, there was a lot of birds holding up in this area and it was almost too much water. So now I think uh, it's gonna kind of bring the birds a bit tighter and kind of uh, kind of have the birds tuck into to smaller holes and things like that. And that's what kind of the plan is for tomorrow. We'll be just a bit to the north of this area, but um, you know, try to, try to copy what we did last week, similar spread, similar setup, and uh, hopefully we can put a hurting on them, so. Morning everybody, out here on the California Delta. Um, we got about 40 minutes before shoot time. Out here with Matt Moso from Fresno State, another Cal Poly guy, Danny Papp. He was with you guys last year. Um, pretty stoked to be out here. This morning we're gonna be on some, some tight water ducks and geese, hopefully pull some specks in. And then as far as ducks go, um, widgeon, teal, mallards. Hopefully we can get a handful of each. And we got about, uh, about an hour till shoot time, maybe 40 minutes. So uh, we're kind of putting the final touches on and uh, gonna brush this blind and we'll get after it. I think we'll, we'll, group, we'll group these ones up. Uh, we'll keep them on this way. Hey, Daniel, you got any more in there? Let's put some mallards over there. Beautiful. Beautiful. Sponsor me too. These hawkers. They come out with the shoot. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. Let's do it. 
I got one. Got the other. Oh yeah! Oh, 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 oh. Hell yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go, dude. Let's go, boys. Nice job, boys. Oh yeah. California Delta, baby. Barred up. Barred up. Here we go, brother. Beautiful. Those are beautiful. Let's go. Getting over you, bro. It's annoying. <laughs> oh man. It's foggy over there on the bay. Yeah. My gun clicked. <laughs> Horrible sound to have. Click. <laughs> Click. We got some uh we got some bacon, asada and egg. <laughs> Alberto's burritos. This is one of Stockton's finest right here. Um, it really is. This is a staple in the in the in the duck blind when you're on the river. Um, you apply the sauce pretty evenly across the top here. And then Cheers. <laughs> oh, I know. I got an extra couple shells there. Yeah. I got it. I got it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I think I was shooting at the same one. I got the I got the other one on the last sure. tail end. Good job, boy. That's awesome. Shooting <laughs> full balls. That's a big boy. That thing's giant, bro. Oh, that that one right there. That one in the middle with the orange beak and the black knob? Yeah, kind of wrapping up today. Uh, ended up with a handful of geese. Um, got a few to do it right. The other ones were a little weary of the, uh, the small water. Uh, ended up fooling four of them. A couple snows, a couple specks. Um, huge shout out to Kent. Uh, we, we were shooting ones all morning and uh, put the hurt on them, the birds that did come in. Um, good hunt with Daniel from Cal Poly and Matt from Fresno State. And uh, Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one, guys. Choo! Um, we're back after today's hunt, back in my hometown at my house. And uh, we're starting the cleaning process on a few of the birds that we shot today. Um, we're gonna start off with a speck. I'm gonna walk you through kinda the way I was, way I kinda grew up cleaning these specks. Um, I mean, I'm by no means any expert, but um, this is kinda the way I grew up doing it. And then we're gonna bring you inside for kind of a quick marinade that we do overnight and uh, we'll get things rolling. So first off, we're starting with the bird. Um, usually what I like to do on these specks is a lot of people will fully pluck them and you know sometimes that can be a really long process. Um, I like to take the wings, fold them back, and then um, we'll, we'll put them in the bag here and we'll start, we'll start taking the feathers off here on the front, on the front breasts. Um, and this kind of lets you know how much fat's on the bird, um, one, which is definitely a key factor in, in cooking these birds and the way you want to cook them. Um, so you can get a nice, a nice breast out of them. Um, this is a mature speck, so most of the time they're, uh, they're pretty fatty and uh, they're, they're pretty dang good eating. These specks out here in California, um, we call them the ribeye of the sky because we're not allowed to shoot the cranes out here. So we'll go all the way down to, to where this bone ends here that runs down the middle. Try and get as much feathers as possible off here. This bird's got a decent amount of fat. Make it all nice and clean. That should do there for a second. 
that should do there. All right, so from here, uh, trying to not get the feathers all over the front yard in the neighborhood. So um, we start here, which is bone, this breast, kind of this breast bone that runs right down the center, as we call it. Um, with this bird, you know, a lot of people take the fat off, especially with ducks, I'll usually take the fat off, um, especially if not that fatty, but this thing's got a decent amount of fat. So we're gonna make two cuts right down either side. And that's kind of how I'll start it off. And um, if you're a beginner watching this, you know, it's kind of the same for all waterfowl. You, you make two cuts down the bone, down the this, this center chest bone or breast bone rather, and you kind of follow this plate all the way down um, and you kind of fillet it out. And that's what they call breast in the bird. So we're here, like I mentioned, we're leaving the fat on. We'll come all the way down. And as I mentioned, I'm no expert, but we'll try and get as close as we can and as clean as we can to that, that breast plate that runs all the way down. We'll come up here cut it off and as you flip it over you see we got the fat on here a few extra feathers that just get uh, tucked in from just being right under the wing but we pull those we'll clean the rest of it up inside but that's that's one I mean it's a real real simple process but you can kind of see what we got going here so next we'll we'll bring these breasts inside we'll do uh, kind of an overnight marinade uh, we do this for about 24 hours, full day, so we'll plan on cooking this for dinner tomorrow uh, here with the family. Um, so let's get that started. All right, guys, we're, uh, we're back inside the house here for the second step in the marinating process, uh, getting the marinade process going, rather. And so first we're going to start off uh, just taking a basic fork, and we're going to put um, holes pressing down here through the fat in the top of the breast, and then you'll do this. I usually do about six or seven times on both sides, and this just allows some of that flavor in your marinade to get in there. Um, and it's really, really simple marinade we got going today. Let me get this other breast with the holes in it. It's a little tough breaking through that fat, but that's uh, that's a key part of the flavor. All right. So as you can see, I kind of peeled away all the all the really small fine feathers um, you know obviously there's gonna be a few in there but those will come off as, as the marinade as it sits in there overnight and as well as you start cooking them uh, so you want to keep this fat as spread out as possible on here and then jumping into the ingredients very basic um, you know I usually do rosemary uh, which I use on a lot of red meat uh, we do a kinder's buttery blend regular olive oil and then just a just a simple cab wine um, something of your liking uh, it's really really simple so first we start off um, we take the take the buttery blend we'll go on both sides um, it's kind of add just a, a hearty flavor to it kind of a buttery taste and the focus here is this fat side you want to put most of the seasoning on this fat side um, definitely still do both but you know this is the side that definitely matters you're gonna be building that kind of crust if you think about it on this front side flip these over get the rosemary on the back side here let's go there make sure as you're doing the seasonings you always press them in um, you know press them in allows it to stick to the meat together and as you put in the liquid marinade, um, it'll stick to this meat overnight. And heavy on the rosemary on the front side here. And I, like I said, you know, I use rosemary really on a lot of red meat. And uh, really comes out good if no matter if you're in the pan or in the oven. So moving on here to the bag. Uh, it really, really depends. I'm no expert here, but I kind of just I kind of just eye it as far as as far as marinade goes. Um, you know, I say I probably do three or four ounces of of olive oil um, when you're doing <clears throat> when you're doing breasts like this, and then as far as wine goes, um, you know, maybe maybe match it with the same. Um, this this cab really tenderizes these breasts and. Um, you know, growing up, 
parents always using red wine to marinate things. It really, really goes good. Complements the spec breast really well. Um, get as much seasoning as you can on here. Throw these in the bag. And make sure a key part of this process is to get as much air as you can out of the bag. And uh, that really helps everything stay airtight, but allows that allows that moisture and, and a lot of the marinade to soak into the breast. It really has nowhere to go other than the breast. I mix it around as much as possible without tearing that fat off the breast, making sure that fat's still on there. Give it 15, 20 seconds of doing this. Uh, you'll see the marinade kind of change color with the seasoning. It turns into more of a more of a brown compared to a uh, you know, traditional red and, and olive oil mix. And then once you get there, I'm going to do it one more time. Like I said, get as much air as possible without moving that marinade up to the top of the bag. Seal it off again, and you're, uh, you're ready for the fridge uh, for about a day. So this will be ready tomorrow night for dinner. As far as cooking it goes, I usually, um, I'll usually pan sear it, so I'll take a pan out olive oil um, you know really it's up to you I, sometimes I'll do butter depending on what I have in the fridge um, I'll throw it in the pan and uh, a key part of it is having that lid for over the top and that really keeps the really keeps the moisture in um, you know a lot of people will cook it in an open air pan and that kind of dries the breast out a little bit um, so depending on how high you're cooking it I mean it'll, it'll usually take 15 to 20 minutes I like usually a lower setting in the pan and um, like I said with that with that clear lid over the top that really helps keep all the juices in and keep keep the breast really tender. Um, and then once you get that, I, I like to serve it over uh, usually some rice and some vegetables, keep it healthy. And um, I mean, it's just like you're eating a steak or, you know, that's why they call it the ribeye of the sky out here. And uh, so that kind of concludes this process. Just want to thank everybody for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Thanks guys.